History of the M10 Tank Destroyer The M10 was developed to replace the only tank destroyer the US had at that time, the M6 gun motor carriage, which was basically a Dodge truck carrying a 37mm gun. So why the US Army used separate tank destroyers? Let's take a look at the US Armored Doctrine at the time of World War II to find it out. In a nutshell, the US Doctrine was that tanks are mainly for breakthrough operations and to support the infantry. They were expected to engage enemy armor, but in the case of a mass enemy armored attack, like the German Blitzkrieg tactics, the countering of these tank forces fell on a newly formed branch, the Tank Destroyer Force. Tank Destroyer units were meant to held back behind the lines and move quickly to the requested areas and engage enemy armored formations. The idea was they needed fast and hard hitting vehicles to maneuver quickly and hit the enemy armor effectively. The plan was to use the vehicle speed to get in position and ambush the enemy forces. Because of that, the requirements were called for speed and firepower, and armor protection only came in the last place and was sacrificed for agility of the vehicles. Tank destroyers were not meant to engage tanks in direct fight, but rather use their speed for ambush and hit and run tactics. Since the only tank destroyer of the US Army was the mentioned M6 truck, but that carrying only the 37mm gun quickly became obsolete. So after the formation of the Tank Destroyer Force in 1941, the Army started to test prototypes for tank destroyers mounting the 3-inch gun. At first the Army tested two prototypes. The T1, or the standardized name M5 3-inch gun motor carriage, was a modified tractor mounting the 3-inch T9 gun. The other was a T24 prototype, an M3 Lee chassis mounting the 3-inch gun. This was rejected for being too tall, which it was, obviously. After these dissatisfactory trials, new specifications were laid out for a tank destroyer with a rotating turret and mounting the 3-inch gun. The first new prototype was the 3-inch gun motor carriage T-35, which combined the M4A2 hull with the 3-inch gun from the M6 heavy tank project in a cast open top turret. The side and rear armor was changed to a slope design for more protection on the second prototype, the T-35E1. Both versions were tested in Aberdeen and the T-35E1 was selected for further development in May 1942. During the development, the side and rear armor was changed from 25 to 19mm to save weight and the cast turret was changed to a sloped welded design for easier manufacturing. This version was standardized as 3-inch gun motor carriage M10 in June 1942. Another version, the M10A1, was also authorized which was similar to the M10, but used the M4A3 chassis instead of the M4A2. The only difference between them was the engine they used. The M4A2 chassis used twin GM diesel engines, while the M4A3 used the petrol Ford GA V8 engines. The advantage of the twin diesel engines were that they could operate separately, so if one engine got damaged, they could be disconnected and the remaining engine used by itself. From the two versions, the M10E1 had better performance, by the time the comparison results were finalized, the army was committed to use the M10 overseas. After production started, it was quickly realized that the M7 gun was so heavy that it prevented the rotation of the turret on slopes. This required counterweights to be fixed at the back of the turrets. The first version of this triangular 2401 counterweight appeared in December 1942, and the wedge-shaped 3,700 pound design was added to any new vehicles by January 1943. After a few months, it was realized that the 3,700 pound weight was too heavy and the new 2,500 pound dug beer design was brought in. Now let's see the specifications of the M10. The M10's main armament is a 3-inch 76mm M7 gun. It also mounts a 50 caliber machine gun. Because the M10 was based on the M4 Sherman chassis, it was not a light vehicle, so to keep the weight down as much as possible, its armor was thinner than the Sherman's. On the front of the hull it had 38mm of armor, on the sides only 19mm. The turret was 57mm on the front and 25mm on the sides. The M10 used the chassis of the M4A2 Sherman, so the drivetrain and suspension was the same. 
The engine was a twin GM6046 diesel engine which was created by joining two 671 diesel engines together. In case of damage the engines could be disconnected and the remaining engine could be used separately. The M10A1 variant was based on the M4A3 Sherman chassis powered by the Ford GAA V8 engine, but this version was not used overseas, only for training in the US. The M10 first saw combat in North Africa in March 1943 in the Battle of El Gatar and was seen successful as the M7 gun was very effective against German tanks. Later in the war during the Normandy campaign it was found that the 76mm gun is less effective against the much heavier new German tanks and the upgunning of the M10 started installing the 90mm M3 gun creating the M36 Jackson gun motor carriage variant. These started arriving in Europe by October 1944 and mostly replaced the original M10s by the end of the war. The M10 was quite heavy and actually did not fit the quick, lightly armored tank destroyer doctrine. Beginning in 1944, its role as a tank destroyer was mainly taken over by the fast M18 Hellcats and the M10s were often attached to infantry and armored divisions to give direct or indirect fire support. The open top was found to be a great weakness of these vehicles as it left the crew vulnerable to infantry attacks especially in close quarters fighting like grenades thrown from windows. They also lost a lot of turret crews to artillery and mortar fire fragments. One of the British serving M10s lost its turret crew three times but the driver survived every time and drove the vehicle back. Initially he had to be transferred to another unit as no crew wanted to drive with him. The M10 also had a manual turret drive, resulting in a very slow turret rotation. It took about 80 seconds to fully rotate the turret, which was a huge drawback in a surprise attack. Despite these problems, the M10 was a great tool for the tank destroyer battalions and had an impressive score against enemy tanks. T35, the original prototype with flat side armor. T35E1, modified prototype with sloped side and rear armor. M10, this was the production variant with twin diesel engines, around 6700 were built in total. M10A1, this variant used the Ford GEA petrol engines, which was only used for training, around 1700 were built. M38 Prime Mover, this was a turretless variant used as artillery tractor. M10C or 17 pounder M10, the British version of the M10 equipped with the 17 pounder gun. British Army. 1648 M10s were supplied to the British and 1017 of these were upgunned to use the 17 pounder gun between May 1944 and April 1945. Free French Army. The French received 227 M10s and those were used in Italy, France and later in Germany. The Red Army. 52 M10s were supplied to the Soviet Union where they were used as self-propelled artillery. Germany, though these are not actually M10s, but during the Battle of the Bulge, the Germans modified Panther tanks to look like M10s as much as possible to confuse Allied troops. Israel Israel bought many M10s from Europe after World War II and used them until 1956 with different modifications. Egypt Egypt had a small number of ex-British M10s and used them in 1948 against the war on Israel. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.